Hey everybody, this is Finer Things Poetry Hour. Um, usually, you know the rules of finer things. You kind of um, treat yourself to something special. Um, I'm like due to go to work in about an hour, so my something special was like brushing my teeth, unfortunately. But I encourage you to get yourself a cup of tea or a cup of something. I'm not here to judge. And uh, I don't know, steal some candy from your kid or whatever's a little sneaky and fun. Um, also, as usual, shut the door, put in some earbuds because a lot of this is adult material. Um, and that's one thing I wanted to warn you about is that there's a lot of adult material in this book. Um, not, not the racy kind, but the um, talking about our father's addiction kind. So this is The Lord and the General Din of the World by Jane Mead. This was one of our picks for our collection for Poetry Month. And I've probably read this collection about three or four times now. I keep pouring over it. Um, I finally managed to like pull out four, three poems that I thought I could read aloud that you guys would like. But I don't know why it took me so long. I just kind of like wanted to keep it to myself for a while, which is like an interesting, um, I don't know, interesting way to experience it, right? Um, so I wanted to show you or read to you a few reviews of this particular volume. I have it on my phone. Sorry, sorry. Um, so for this particular book, The Lord and the General Den of the World, this was written by U.S. Poet Laureate uh, Robert Haas in the Washington Bo Post book world. He says, there is a mood connected to solitude that is not it is not loneliness and not despair that feels like it could turn into either if you did not try to love the world or at least look at it attentively. This book seems written from that place. It's a book to be read slowly and quietly. If you are to feel your way into its deep sadness and its small, sudden well of joy. And I definitely experienced that when I read it. I thought of um, Mary Oliver's quote, um, pay attention and be astonished. <laughs> um, so here's another quote. The confessional lyric poems in Mead's stark commanding first collection were selected by Philip Levine for the 1995 Catherine A. Morton Prize in Poetry. Mead combines flinty honesty with an organic intellect as when she arches the work of Bach and Van Gogh over transcendent moments in daily life, she employs taught colloquial language and firmly paces, places her personal history against a searching, almost existential understanding of the world, even at, at its most difficult. Many of these powerful, subtle poems concern her father's heroin addiction, focusing on how that life changes or skews what it means to be human. Mead pinpoints and gives form to tenuously, seemingly nameless emotions. Somewhere there should be a place, the exact shape of my emptiness. There should be a place responsible for taking one back. That's a quote from her work. That, preci that precision gives her poetry, though often spawned of rough sub subject matter, addiction, abuse, suicide, and profound isolation, the power of expertly cut gems. So I was looking over just like a list of her works and the years and stuff, and I assumed that Jane Mead was still alive. It turns out, unfortunately, she died rather young when she was 61 in, uh, in 2019 of endometrial cancer. So that was kind of like a sad discovery when I was looking up information about her. Um, the New York Times did, or actually no, the LA Times um, did a really like beautiful tribute to her. Here's a really sweet picture of her, I thought. Um, Jane Mead, an American poet, between organisms and their environment has died. She died of endo endometrial cancer September 8th in her home in Napa, said her friend Cather Kathleen Finnerinen. She was 61 years old. In a literary career that spanned more than 20 years, Mead wrote five poetry collections 
and her work was regularly pu published in anthologies and journals. She was a Griffin Poetry Prize and Los Angeles Times Book Prize finalist for her 2016 book, World of Made and Unmade, about her mother's death. It was also longlisted for the National Book Award. Former Times poetry contributor Carol Musk Dukes wrote in 2017 that Mead's poems revealed a compassionate aesthetic imagination. Here's another pretty sweet picture of her. <laughs> anyway, this article is, um, is a very uh, beautiful tribute to her work. And I think I'll include um, a link to it in uh, the show notes so that you can read it for yourself rather than just reading the whole thing to you. But I think it's worth reading. And her books are worth seeking out. And this one will be at our Lodi Library. So um, please hold it. So I have three selections I wanted to share with you. And then a few prompts for you if you want to write your own poetry or short story, prose, whatever you enjoy writing. Um, here's the first one. This one is called Sparrow, My Sparrow. The voice that loves me best when I am dreaming comes from every corner of the circle of my sleep, speaking in the sound of my own drowning she said, the body's just a habit getting old, a crystal turning on a nerve of ancient longing. She says, I will teach you how to be with yourself always, she says. We do not live in the same world. All this is just an allegory for the truth. Truth is, I cannot speak the voice that I've been dreaming. Truth is, the slate sky darkens, clouds of sparrows heave in the wind, the trees are massed with sparrows screaming, and the fields are dotted with them. The birds are bracing themselves. The birds are frenzied by something about to happen. Truth is, I have my feet on the slimy banks. I look for my face in the murk green river, and the water's surface does not change. But I hear myself in the screech of sparrows, and I am panicked by something about to happen. Slate sky, darkened, sound in wind, I enter this world like myself as a prayer. I enter this world as myself. I cannot help myself. What is a prayer but a song of longing, turning, turning on the thread of its own history? I feel myself loved by a voice in the wind. I cover my ears with my palms. The whole world rocks and still the gold, the cold green river does not spill. So the first prompt is, what is the sound of your dream speaking? The next piece is called the argument against us. The line of a man's neck bent, overwhelming, Torchlight breaking shadows on his face, hands cracked into a parched map of fields he has woken. The gods wanted us. Think of their patient preparation. The creature who left the rocking waves behind, crawling up on some beach, the sun suddenly becoming clear, small thing abandoning water for air, crooked body not quite fit for either world, but the one that finally made it. Think of all the others. Much later, spine uncurls, jaw pulls back, brow bone recedes, and as day breaks over the dry plain, a rebellious boy takes an upright step where primitive birds are shrieking above him. He did it for nothing. He did it against all odds. Bones of wrist, twist of tooth, angel of atoms, an infinity of courage sorted into fact against the shining backdrop of the world. The line of one man's neck bent, torchlight breaking shadows on his face. There was a creature who left the waves behind and a naked child on a windy plain. 
when the atom rips out our only world and we're carried away on a wave of hot wind. I will love them no less. They are just how much the gods wanted us. So my prompt for that one is, do the gods still want us? <laughs> so the last one happens to be the last poem in the book. And it's called, Passing a Truck Full of Chickens at Night on Highway 80. <laughs> All right. What struck me first was their panic. Some were pulled by the wind from moving to the ends of the stacked cages. Some had their heads blown through the bars and could not get them in again. Some were hung there like that, dead, their own feathers blowing, plodding in their faces. Then I saw one that made me slow some. I lingered there beside her for five miles. She had pushed her head through the space between the bars to get a better view. She had the look of a dog in the back of a pickup. That eager look of a dog who knows she's been taking, taken along. She cranes her neck. She looks around, watched me, and then sprained to see over the other car, strained to see what happened beyond. That is the chicken that I want to be. So of course, my prompt for the last one is, which chicken are you? <laughs> So guys, have a great day. Um, please hold books, magazines, audiobooks, DVDs at Lodi Library and come to curbside pickup and say hello to me and Beth. Um, you can either give us a call at the office or you can email us at holds at lodilibrary.net to hold your books or you can go right on our website and go on the online catalog and just do, do, do. Um, we can do book bundles. So like if you're just feeling like I have no idea what I want, but I want to read poetry or I want to read, um, I don't know, crafting or I want to read dog training or I want a bunch of cookbooks. We can just, uh, you know, intuit what we think you want and give you a nice little bundle of resources and you can use what you use and don't use what you're not going to use and then just bring them back when you're done. Um, so that's fun for both of us. Um, so yeah, please hold books. And then also this Friday starts summer fun packs for kids. So if you have a child in your life, they don't have to be a resident of Lodi necessarily. Um, anybody under the age of 18, if you want more time to read poetry and you want to keep them occupied, this is a great way to do it. Every week you come and you pick up a pack that includes... Uh, free reading material, you know, age appropriate. We have everything from board books to YA novels and um, a free assortment of snacks, like really good ones that I think they'll like. Um, and then we're also having like a thematic um, toy and activity. Um, they're all fun, a little bit of old fashioned type toys that um, I just feel like after being in school and stuck with their faces in a computer screen for the past three months, they really um, deserve some hands-on fun. So that's what we're trying to, to give to them with some like written activities that they can try. So it's a little, I don't know, a little experimental, very hands-on and just getting kids like uh, moving and experiencing and hopefully having a really good summer. So. Again, have a great day. Enjoy some poetry.